Well, after the disrespectful little shit, Baron Blade smacked me in the face at NXT TakeOver, he proceeded to get his candy ass whooped two nights in a row, and now Mick McKay is going to talk about that. Renee Young asking about Baron Blade. We saw you two go face-to-face -face in the ring tonight. Can you share any thoughts? What's he going to say? I am greatness. I am the freaking man. Oh, my God, Baron Blade. Oh, my Lord. Baron Blade is the most disrespectful little shit I've ever seen in my life. He just attacked Mick McKay from behind after getting his ass kicked twice in a row. And now he tosses Mick McKay into that stage prop, whatever the hell it's called. And a jumping DDT. Mick McKay is not going to let Baron Blade gain the upper hand after that attack. He's going for a steel chair. He's got a steel chair. Oh, drove across the back and the front of Baron Blade. Multiple chair shot after chair shot and now drove right into the gut. My Lord, ladies and gentlemen, this episode is picking up right where the other one left off. The action is intense already in the first minute and a half. Baron Blade doesn't know what hit him, even though he tried to gain the upper hand on Mick McKay. Oh, he went for a trash can there, and to no avail. And oh, and he power slams Mick McKay with a huge power slam on Baron Blade. And there's that little black dot again, and here we go. We're going for the world famous glitching wreck. Is it going to glitch this time? No, drove into the face of the Bladester. And it's just getting worse. That was good. Oh, another shot to the face. My Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, repeated shot after shot with that rack. Baron Blade is not going to be able to get up. He might be injured once and for all permanently. Mick McKay is ruthless right now. He's got a bone to pick with Baron Blade. You're going to attack me. You're going to get the crap beat out of you. Oh, and he hits him again. This time Baron Blade grabbed it out of his hand. And he's going to sling Mick McKay towards the front of the backstage area. Not really no direction there. But now, oh, right into that freaking utility box. These two men were just in a match where Baron Blade lost once again. And now that crossbody off that utility box, he didn't quite get all of it, though, but Baron Blade nailing Mick McKay. My Lord, ladies and gentlemen, this has been intense already. A battle ensuing in the backstage area. We are now in the wrestler's locker room area. And Baron Blade's getting cocky. I don't know who you're getting cocky with because there's no fans back here. And he went for a DDT, but Mick McKay reverses it and turns it into like a half DDT. And now he's got a trash can. What's he going to do? Oh, slamming it on the sternum, rib cage, chesticles of Baron Blade. And now the Alabama slammer. My Lord. Oh, he's got a briefcase now. What's he going to do? Oh, he went to hit him, but he didn't. Oh, and he cracked it over his cranium that time. Mamma mia, that was crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, what's Mick McKay going for here? Is he going for the Irish cutter? This might put him away. Irish cutter. And that's exactly what it does is put Baron Blade away permanently. Before we get too far into this video, I want you to do me a favor as tall as Big Cass and Lig, drop that like button and pin it for the one, two, three, like Hulk Hogan did to Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3. We are here for this edition of NXT, and apparently Mick McKay needs a break because they're not giving him a match tonight. No match tonight, but two promos, two self-promotion promos. So what we're going to do, basically, is we're going to do both of them. And then I'm going to pick which one is best for the video. And we'll go from there and we'll see what happens after that. I think Baron Blade is going to get involved in one of them. I'm not exactly sure. But I want to thank each and every single one of the people 
that are tuning into this channel. If you're new, then subscribe. Grab that subscribe button and strangle the life out of it. And comment down below and let me know what you think of these WWE 2K17 videos. I think I'm doing a pretty damn good job. But we're going to get right into this self promotion promo it's gonna be like when the rock come down there for the first time and raised his hand up and said shut your damn mouth it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be epic it's gonna be in my batman voice if i can muster up enough phlegm to do christian bell's batman but mick mckay the scotch irish nightmare is here and what has he got to say? Maybe he will address the Baron Blade situation and how it is a complete joke that he has to get into the ring night after night with that jabroni that looks like the offspring of John Cena. Okay choice. I thought it would be a thrill to be out here, but I vastly underestimated just how boring you all are to me. Why we superstars even waste our time talking to you mewling masses is beyond me. But I guess you did rub your precious nickels together to get yourself here. So I'll indulge you. I will indulge you indeed, sir. Hmm. Which one should we pick? Strong reaction. I'm not enjoying the current state of the WWE. And why? I'm well paid. I'm well traveled. I'm well enjoyed. Sort of. But I'm not the biggest star on the roster. And that's where I need to be. You got that right, Mick McKay. That is exactly where you need to be. You're number three in the rankings now. You've moved up. You've moved up faster in the past month than you had the first three months you were here. Strong reaction bonus, level three. What does a guy have to do to get a main event at a pay-per-view? I mean, I've gotten the WWE Universe on my side. That's pretty best for business if you ask me. I've had some five-star matches. Do I need to bake the authority a cake? I don't know if Stephanie would look too great on one of those. Do I need to be working out with Triple H every night? Then again, maybe he wouldn't feel so confident if he saw moi in the mirror. Strong reaction level four. Finally, I'd also like to make it known that I am currently seeking a personal servant. If you or anyone you know is interesting in doing as I say when I say it, go ahead and give me a call. Just just pick up the phone and call me. 8675309, that's the number you can reach me at. For all you people that listen to 80s music, if you know what I'm talking about, then comment down below. So what's next? What's he going to say next? Ooh, good choice. Level five. Now, finally, the best part of my night? Getting out of this dump. No, seriously. The, feud is, uh, the food is mediocre. The people are mediocre. This city shouldn't even exist. Maybe I should ask for that next time I'm out here. Hey, whatever. He had the fans in his back pocket there for a second talking about the authority. And then he spits in their face by talking about Orlando, Florida. A rich history. You're right. Mick McKay has a rich history. That was a very good promo right there. That might have moved Mick McKay up to number two. You never know what's going to happen with this weird, crazy, mama jamma of a freaking rating system in 2K17. I mean, come on. It is ridiculous. I've been beating the living shit out of everybody. And I've only moved up two spots. Granted, I did start off at number five. If not, God, I can't imagine. It might be two or three years before I move up to the main roster. But no, no, no. 
I'm not going to bitch too much, though, because I do love this game compared to 2K16. 2K16's career mode was boring, it was dull, it was too easy, it had no substance, it had no variety, it was always the same old bull crap with Renee Young and the same old tired-ass storylines. This one so far has surprised me, like when Baron Blade smacked the crap out of me at NXT TakeOver, that was freaking hilarious. Bo Dallas defeats Jaden Jett. My lord, Bo Dallas has put together a string of victories, and now we have another self-promotion promo. So we're going to see. Apparently, Mick McKay is not finished. And no, I am not finagling this. This is legit. This is the game putting me into two interviews. So we're going to do something a little different here. We're going to go ahead and... I said we was going to pick the best one, but we're not... We're going to put both of them on here just to show you that this game is obviously screwed up in the head. Who does two promos in one night? I don't know. Mick McKay obviously does, though. He has to grace the NXT universe with his presence twice in one night. And a poor choice. All you people here and all you people watching at home. Your hero has arrived. Oh, I knew it. Baron the Razor Blade. Generic superstar number one making his way down to the ring with his fake ass tattoos. I knew it was going to happen. I knew he was going to interrupt me. He always does. Actually, he didn't. So yeah, we're going to put both interviews out here. The cocky arrogance of Mick McKay. And then he returns out here to run his mouth again. And fellow heel superstar Baron Blade, who refuses to shake his hand numerous times, has snuck attacked Mick McKay. Mick McKay has repaid the favor over the past several weeks. Tonight we're going to have a showdown in the middle of the ring between these two. Just when I thought the day couldn't get any worse. Not only did I have to travel all the way to this stinking podunk city, I have to listen to you speak like hell. I'm going to let that happen. Not if I have anything to say about it, and believe me, I have plenty to say about it. Well, Baron Blade, I'm going to have to do a little different voice for Baron Blade. All right, let's see if I can beat him right here, right now. All right. Hold on a second. You think you're making a statement by interrupting me? I'm the greatest superstar to ever grace the inside of this ring, and the WWE Universe paid good money to hear me speak. So whatever you have to say, hurry up and be on your way. Yeah, that was pretty good. I think I'm going to start doing a Scottish accent for Nick McKay. Hey, my name is Scotty. Beaming you up every night on your WWE television. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. The microphone can't take any more. I'm going to make this short and sweet. I'm sick of being overlooked by the fans and other superstars. And the authority. I've proved myself to be one of the top talents in this company, but I have yet to get the respect I deserve and the opportunities that come along with it. And I refuse to sit quietly about it anymore. I'm going to have to figure out a voice for Baron Blade. Maybe it could be like, I'm going to make this short and sweet. I'm sick of being overlooked by the fans. Baron Blade. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. Here we go. Ooh, strong reaction. Are you done? Because I just learned to fall asleep with my eyes open. You really should warn everybody before you try to bore them to death. So why don't I wake this crowd up by beating the crap out of you? And showing the WWE Universe why I am the best in ring performer in the WWE. I might, cha I might change it up too and do a little Irish verse. Like, are you done yet? Because I just want him to fall asleep. Baron Blade. I want to break you. I want to break your face, your legs, your hands, your feet, your arms, your back. I want to completely and utterly break you. I want to break not just your body, but your spirit too. 
I want to end you. I want to be the miserable. I want to. I want you to be miserable for the rest of your sad, pathetic life. Jesus, I can't even read a freaking paragraph. Oh, you're really gonna say that to me, huh? You're gonna say that to me? I don't think so. Take a beat down. Oh, we just kicked him in the grapefruits. Mick McKay just beat the crap out of him. Kicked him in the grapefruits. My God. And now he's going to give him an exploder suplex. What's he up to here? Baron Blade just got kicked in the holy grapefruits. Ah Shoving that chair in his back. Take it. Take it again. Baron Blade, you made a mistake coming out here and interrupting me. Oh, oh. Jawbreaker. And a DDT right onto that chair. And now the referee's out there and he just clotheslined Baron Blade and the referee somehow magically appeared out of nowhere and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think so, bud. You cannot fight people like that. You can't do it, okay? You can't attack somebody when you're conducting an interview. I'm gonna come out here every time and stop you. Every bit as good as the last well, that was about retarded, Second ladies and gentlemen. We have a real but Baron Blade interrupted me, and he got what he deserved. And you can hear ambulances in the background right now. I live in the ghetto. The police are flying by like a bullet out of a freaking gun right now. Tyson Kidd putting Zack Ryder back in the losing streak. Big Cass Enzo Amori picking up a victory over the Ascension, or more like the assholes. Sami Zayn defeating an Aiden English who rarely competes in singles action. Look at Sami Zayn's face. What does it look like he's got Down Syndrome? Shinsuke Nakamura defeating Apollo Crude. And Samoa Joe beating Baron Corbin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this week's edition of NXT. We're going to skip ahead just a little bit and see what's next. For Mick McKay, the Scorch Irish Nightmare. Alright, we got a match with Samoa Joe, the Samoan Bulldozer. A rematch from a few episodes ago on main event tonight. Whoa, don't you ever come running at me like that, Samoa Joe? You big son of a bitch. I'll kill you where you stand. Oh! He just swept my feet. That was the slowest roundhouse sweep I've ever seen in my life from the the big Samoan bruiser. A pretty good suplex there, driving Mick McKay down into the mat as hard as he could. Mick McKay with an arm drag takedown to Samoa Joe, and Samoa Joe with the elbow reversal. Oh no! And Mick McKay reversing it too. I really hope they get rid of that freaking dot, turning it into a reverse DDT scorpion death drop. I really hope they get rid of that little black dot when they do the patch. Oh, we went for the lunatic bridge elbow drop. He didn't quite get all of it. But he did hit it nonetheless. A couple of clubbing forearms to the back of Samoa Joe. So we got a Samoan and a Scotch Irish American. Ooh, there's one clothesline. Could he be going for the four corners? Apparently not. Ooh, quick jab. He's throwing him into there, and he's got two of them. Two clotheslines now. Is he going to get the third one? Three. Three in a row, ladies and gentlemen. We've got one more clothesline to hit. And Samoa Joe's running out of stamina, and he got it. The four corners clothesline from hell. He got it. Samoa Joe pushing him away, but Mick McKay is on the offensive tonight, and a Falcon Arrow getting the big, huge, fat Samoa Joe up. Wow. That was impressive, and now he's going for an early Scotch hangover, and he hit it. He could put Samoa Joe away right now. He has stunned him. One, two, and oh, Samoa Joe gets that shoulder up right at the nick of time. Mick McKay showing his pure offensive maneuvers tonight and a Frankenstein. The agility of Mick McKay 
He is taking it to Samoa Joe like Samoa Joe has never felt before in his life. Now that senton, rolling, flipping senton off the top rope. Wow, Samoa Joe doesn't know what's hit him. It's like Mick McCain come out with a butt, butt, ugh, come out like a buzz saw. Samoa Joe ran right out of the gate and was caught with a clothesline and now he is paying for his aggressiveness because Mick McKay is methodically beating the living shit out of Samoa Joe. He literally has not put up one shred of offense in this matchup and now a dream killer. All of Samoa Joe's dreams just got killed right there. One rope break. Roadhouse. Ooh, a kick to the back. Stomp to the chest. Mick McKay, this has been easy for Mick McKay. And another scotch hangover in the middle of the ring. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Samoa Joe's not getting up from that. One, two, no. Samoa Joe. He's got a lot of resiliency, even though he hasn't made a lot of freaking effort tonight. What are you doing, ref? I'm the man, and you know it. Trying to drop kick the ref. Oh, Joe taking a breather down here. He's probably eating some Cheetos while he's at it. And another Frankenstein. Another Frankensteiner. Hurricane Rana, whatever you want to call it. I call it Frankensteiner because I grew up watching the Steiner Brothers. And a choke slam. Dang, Samoa Joe, what is wrong with you tonight? One, two, maybe Mick McKay is just getting that damn good. It is on legend mode, so I don't understand why Samoa Joe's not putting up more of a fight tonight. And he finally gets a reversal in. And a headbutt. Maybe he's gonna make an offensive effort here now. Nah. Maybe Samoa, oh my God, Samoa Joe's going for the sledgehammer. Oh, and he just drove it into Mick McKay's gut. And now he's leaving. He said, screw that. Mick McKay winning by disqualification. Samoa Joe just made a statement right there, though. This might not be the last time these two men meet. I can guarantee it won't be. Samoa Joe taking the high road. He was getting the freaking chicken shit beat out of him. And he went and got a sledgehammer and got out of the match as quickly as he got into it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this episode. That was crazy. Two interviews that I did not set up. It was like that. The way I'm telling you right now, it was like that. And it's a mojo screw job in me out of a beatdown. But we will see you next time. Do me a huge favor as tall as Big Cass and leg drop the like button like a name was Hulk Hogan. Comment down below. Subscribe for more WWE 2K17 content. This is the Scotch Irish Mick telling you good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We'll see you next time.